Hello, welcome to the video solution for Red Excel Physics. Uh, this is uh, IEL Physics Unit 4, January 2019, uh, Part 1. Question number 1 Which of the following is equivalent to Farad? Remember, Farad is the unit of capacitance. Capacitance. That means you need to look for the formula for a capacitance and the capacitance is defined as uh, amount of charge is stored per unit volt. So from this formula, this is capacitance measured in farad and this is a charge measured in coulomb and V is the voltage measured in volt. So farad is equal to coulomb per volt or coulomb uh, volt inverse so option is B question number two a potential difference V is applied across two identical capacitors of capacitance C connected in series which of the following expression is the total energy stored on the capacitor so you have two capacitors connected in series so this is capacitor of capacitance like that so both have the same capacitance C and C and you know that the the voltage of uh, the power supply which is V this V is uh, divided between the two capacitances so because they have uh, same capacitances so the voltage across each capacitor would be V by 2 and V by 2 that means if you need to find the energy stored in one capacitor so energy stored in a capacitor E is half of C V square this is general formula for energy stored in a capacitor so if you apply this formula for one capacitor your voltage is V by 2 so energy in one capacitor is E is equal to half of C V square V square means V by um, 2 square and V, by, v square by 4 so this is energy stored in one capacitor or you can say you can have energy one eighth of CV square this is energy stored in one capacitor so total energy will be twice of that's so a total energy ET would be double of one eighth of CV squared so two and eight gone so ET total energy stored is 1 upon 4 CV squared so your option is A question number 3 two parallel conducting plates are separated by distance D a potential difference V is applied between the plates and charge Q is placed halfway between them as shown which of the following gives the magnitude of the force acting on the charge so you know that in a in a in a uniform magnetic field the force on a charge F is E Q this is the force on the charge but between the two plates electric field intensity E is volt per unit distance V upon D so you can replace E with the V upon D here so F is equal to V Q by D so from that you have option D question number four a current carrying wire is placed perpendicular to magnetic field of magnetic flux density 0 0.05 tesla the length of the wire in the field is 10 centimeter and force on the wire is 2 into the power minus 3 newton which of the following is current in the wire so a current carrying wire placed perpendicular 
that means theta is equal to 90 so you can say that force on a conductor F is equal to B I L and you need to find the amount of current so I is equal to F divided by B and L force is 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by magnetic field 0 0.05 Tesla times length of the conductor 10 centimeter don't forget to convert centimeter into meter so 0 0.1 if you solve this so I would be equal to 0 0.4 ampere and then you can uh, see if 0 0.4 is not here in the option but if you shift this decimal on the uh, right hand side so you can write as 4 uh, into 10 to the power minus 1 ampere that's how you can see you have option D question number 5 which row of the table shows the quark structure of uh, mesons and its anti-meson so meson is uh, a particle that uh, contains one quark and one anti quark so if you see you cannot have option C and D because they are giving you three combination of three quarks so don't waste time to thinking about C or D you need to choose either from A or B uh, if you see the meson must contain a quark and then anti quark so it's if uh, uh, and then if you see now the option option A is U bar and D so anti quark and the quark and its anti meson should be yes this is anti up and up down and anti down so you can have option so you have option A not can of course you have option A for that that, that question why can why can't we have a B because we have a quark and anti quark but if you see we have a same composition both sides we have anti D and anti D up and up so they are not uh, uh, meson and anti meson so our option is A question number six a particle has mass 3.4 giga electron volt per c squared uh, which of the following gives uh, the mass of particle in kilogram remember whenever you, you are given uh, energy giga electron volt per c square so you multiply this number 3.4 giga means 10 to the power 9 and this is electron volt so you multiply this electron volt with 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 this is energy in joule and when you divide this energy in joule with the c square and c square means 3 into 10 to the power 8 whole squared so that will give you energy ma uh, mass of the particle in kilogram so your option is D Question number seven. The diagram shows the track of two particles P and Q created from an original particle at X. Okay. Which of the following can be concluded from this diagram? P and Q have equal and opposite momentum. No, we cannot conclude that because if uh, for 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 a time being if you assume that there is no magnetic field acting here so both the particle P and Q will be traveling down so we cannot say that they have equal and opposite momentum the original particles had no charge uh, indeed that is your uh, our option B why we can say that because uh, P and Q have a same curvature and uh, they are moving in opposite direction so one particle must be positive the other particle must be negative which one we cannot tell until unless we 
we are told uh, about the magnetic field, the direction of magnetic field, but we know that because both particles are spiraling, spiraling in opposite direction, so both have uh, opposite charges. That means X must be neutral. So the original particle had no charge. The original particle was stationary. It is. It cannot be concluded because we don't know about the X whether it is moving or from the diagram. It cannot be said. There is a magnetic field acting in, into the page. It is also not. Uh, uh, cannot be said because uh, we don't know which one is a positive and negative particle. For sure, we can say that the particle X had no charge. So option is B. Question number eight. The drum of washing machine rotates at the rate of 1200 uh, rotation per minute. Uh, what is its angular velocity in radian per second? So we are given RPM, revolution per minute or, or rotation per minute. We need to convert this RPM into radian per second. So whatever the value in RPM is given, we multiply with this 2 pi because in one revolution we have 2 pi radian per minute divided by 60. Now we have a time in second. Once you solve this, so you have answer 125.66 and you can round it off 125.66 as 126. So your option is C. Question number nine. A body of mass M has momentum P and kinetic energy EK. Which of the following is the kinetic energy of a body of mass 2M and the momentum 2P? So we need to look at the relation between kinetic energy and the momentum. And the equation gives us EK, kinetic energy, is related with the momentum at, as, and, and mass is as uh, P square upon 2M. So if you have a mass M and momentum P, so kinetic energy will be Ek. What if you change the momentum and the mass? So kinetic energy will be changed. So the new kinetic energy will be Ek dash. And the new momentum is 2P. So it is the P square. So 2P square is 4P square divided by twice of the mass. So twice of the mass is 2 into 2M. And now clearly you can see that this is the original kinetic energy. So you can cancel this 2 and the 4. So you can say that this is twice of the old kinetic energy E k. So double of the of the previous kinetic energy if mass is double and the momentum is double. So the new kinetic energy will be uh, twice. So option will be B. Ten electrons can be used to investigate atomic nuclei. Which of the following is not a reason why electron can be used for such an investigation? Electron can be accelerated to a very high speed. Yes, it is a reason. Uh, we, we, we need to find the reason which is not, uh, uh, the, the following is not a reason. So we need to find which is not the reason. Uh, electron can have a wavelength similar to size of the nuclear atomic nuclei uh, electron have negative charge yes it is not the reason we are we are uh, choosing electron not because of the negative charge because the same investigation can be done uh, with the help of a positive charge so uh, for electron uh, have a negative charge is not the reason uh, that we use for for electron in this investigation so option is c this is not the reason that we are using electron Question number 11, the photograph shows an airplane which is powered by two engines. When an air, airplane is uh, cruising, air enters uh, the engine at the speed of 252 meters per second and is ejected at a higher speed, providing the thrust for the airplane. The mass of airplane ejected uh, by one of the engine in one minute is... Uh, Three four six hundred kg. The total thrust provided by the engine is one thirty eight kilonewton. So calculate the speed relative to 
the aeroplane at which the air is ejected by the engine so we have uh, velocity initial velocity we have mass and we have force and we need to find the final velocity so we need to use uh, uh, Newton's second law so the thrust F is equal to change in momentum or rate of change of momentum so m v minus m u divided by t and we need to find final velocity that means we need to find v so we can rearrange this equation as uh, v v is equal to f into t divided by mass plus u so f is the thrust which is 138000 newton t is the time in 1 minute 60 second m is the mass but remember the mass that is given is just for one engine you need to take the mass for both of the engine so you will have to use twice of the mass that's how uh, you will do your calculation so you can say that the final velocity v would be equal to force which is 138 thousand times time time is one minute 60 second divided by mass mass is uh, twice of uh, three four six hundred plus initial velocity which is uh, 252 and if you solve the uh, this equation simplify the right hand side so we will be giving you 371.65 or you can round it off v is equal to 372 meter second inverse that's how you can find the velocity thank you very much have a nice time